The school bell sounds, and the classrooms explode with the noise of books closing, chairs sliding on the floor, and kids chattering. It's time for recess. The students head outside to the school garden. Mrs. McCarthy, above, the third grade teacher, dreamed of having a school garden. She talked to the other teachers, the principal, and the parents, and they all worked together to make her dream come true. The garden is cared for by Miss Sue. Right. Question. Who did Miss McCarthy talk to about her dream of having a school garden? Why might it have been important to talk to these people? Miss Sue's husband, Will, designed the layout of the garden. College students Paul, Danielle, Autumn, and Allie volunteer to guide the children in the garden projects. Students enter the garden through an arbor. It's spring and there are lots of chores to be done. Depending on the weather, some classes are held in the open classroom, the garden, or the greenhouse. In early spring, Miss Sue asks the students to make a book with pictures they cut out from seed catalogs. These are the flowers, fruits, and vegetables that the students would like to grow. Later, she and the students will decide where to plant them. Every day, one student is asked to take a bucket of food scraps from the lunches and snacks and dump it in the compost pile. The compost is made up of soil dead plants, and food scraps. Inside the pile, red wriggler worms are busy eating and turning these ingredients into castings, which the students call poop. Compost is mixed into the garden beds to provide food for the seedlings. Question. What is compost made of, and what is it used for? Springtime is planting time. These are a few of the seeds that will be planted in the garden. Pinto beans, sunflower seeds, cucumber seeds, seed potatoes. When it's still cold outside, some seeds are planted in the greenhouse. There, students fill small plastic pots with rich soil and plant a seed in each. The pots are left in the greenhouse, where the sun warms them. Soon, tiny seedlings begin to pop out of the soil. When they are bigger and the weather is warmer, the plants will be transplanted into the garden beds outside. Flowers, vegetables, and fruits are planted in the beds of rich, composted earth. A teepee made of bamboo poles stands in the middle of the garden. Some students plant pole bean seeds at the base of each pole. The plants will grow up the teepee and sprout their pods. Meanwhile, in the morning shade of the school, Paul hands out salad green and flower seeds to plant in a waffle bed. The bed's low walls of adobe bricks help keep the water in. Another group of students plant squash seedlings. Danielle helps a student transplant a tomato seedling. Once the seeds and seedlings are in the ground, the beds are watered and covered with a mulch of straw to keep the soil from drying out. A lot of water is needed to keep the garden healthy. When it rains, water flows off the roof, down a drain pipe, and into an underground tank called a cistern. A solar panel on the roof of the outdoor classroom creates electricity to run the pump that draws water from the cistern. 
One of the students' favorite jobs is watering the garden. Miss Sue fills the colorful watering cans for them. The tomato plants are surrounded by plastic tubes filled with water. During the day, the sun warms the water in the tubes. At night, the tubes provide the warmth that tomato roots need to grow. When there is no rainwater in the cistern, a hose attached to an outdoor faucet is used to keep the soil moist and plants healthy. Even when the students aren't at school, there's a lot going on in the garden. A post with holes drilled into it becomes a nesting box for mason bees, which don't sting. Birds come to eat at the feeders. Worms are busy eating and making tunnels in the compost pile. Flowers produce a sweet liquid called nectar. When a bird or bee or butterfly goes into a flower to drink the nectar, a powder called pollen sticks to them. When they fly into another flower, the pollen rubs off. Pollen allows the flower to make the seeds that will grow into flowers, fruits, or vegetables. This process is called pollination. In the early spring, a teacher orders butterfly cocoons by mail. When they arrive, the students put the cocoons in a net cage to raise them in the classroom. When the butterflies emerge, they are taken to the garden and released so they can pollinate the plants. Question. What role do animals play in the community garden? Many different creatures live in the garden or come by to visit. Crickets, ladybugs, grasshoppers, and beetles fly, hop, or crawl about. Pill bugs, also called roly-polies, gophers, and even garter snakes can be found living among the garden's plants or tunneling in its soil. There are lots of things in the garden to write about and draw about. An easel in the middle of the garden invites anyone to draw what they see or write down their thoughts or experiences. Some students use leaves to make leaf prints. Their art decorates the greenhouse in the outdoor classroom. Question. Go back to the text and look for the different student jobs mentioned. Talk to your partner about which job you would like to have.